enlightening have you found then, Matt Hancock, so far today? Well, we've been saying for a very long time as a medical and virological community that we are cruising for a biological bruising. And we were saying that well before 2020 and the arrival of COVID. We've been warning governments all over the world that this is going to happen. And if you look at the rate at which these sorts of new diseases have emerged, that rate has increased. Because if we think in 2003, we had SARS, the ancestor of what has happened in the last three years. Then in 2009, we had swine flu. That was a flu pandemic. Then in 2014, Ebola surfaced in a really big way in Africa. And for the first time, we saw cases outside the African continent. Shortly after, we had Zika and then we got COVID. The rate at which this was happening was intensifying. It's probably driven by a number of factors, including rising human population, population mobility and so on. But what that means is the warning lights were flashing red on the dashboard. This is happening. It's happening more often. The risk is increasing that it's going to happen in a big way. We need to be prepared. So it's very interesting to hear Matt Hancock saying, well, we were woefully unprepared. And I think the difficulty that politicians are confronting with this is when they look at the, the data of, of yesteryear, Pandemics happen or did on roughly a one in 30 year cycle, three in every century or so. That's what history had served us up and dealt us in the past. And they probably were thinking, when we've got bigger fish to fry, we've got big demands on our resources, we could invest in something where there's a lower likelihood that this is going to happen in this political cycle. There's a much higher likelihood that other things that will get us re-elected if we do something about them need to be prioritised. And I think that was the, the issue. There were, there were priorities that, that trumped dealing with a possible pandemic that hadn't happened yet. And the UK wasn't the only one. I mean, look, look around the world. Everyone paid a price for COVID. Nobody was perfectly prepared. Some countries paid a higher, more handsome price. So we weren't the only ones that were unprepared. Yeah, but given the fact that the inquiry is trying to learn lessons and prepare better for the future, could that be repeated where we think, well, this is not going to happen again. This is a once in a lifetime occasion and the same mistakes could be repeated? I think there's a very great danger that we will get past this and we'll think, thank goodness that's over and we'll move on because there are higher priorities, there are higher callings, our resources remain limited and the money and resources will be spent elsewhere because people will think, that's good, that's over, we won't have that happen again. And someone else is worrying about it. We must make sure there isn't that mentality of someone else is worrying about it. We've all got to, as a global community, got to worry about it and I think got to worry about it more. Um, there are some learning points. Um, being able to get our public health systems to have autonomy so they can act quickly, decisively and in their own way that they know best how to do. There, there was too much top down control we found during COVID. And I think that was echoed by um, other people who've talked in the inquiry so yeah, far. Yeah. Uh, David Cameron pointed towards that. So we need more of that. We need to make sure that we are better across all the systems that we can use in the future. We had to try and invent a test and trace and track system from scratch, as Matt Hancock's saying, that cost an enormous amount of money. And we had to discover all the ways not to do it before we found ways that sort of began to work. I think now we know the power of technology and the, the fact that everyone's got a mobile phone in their pocket these days, we do have powerful tools that can be brought to bear against this. There needs to be planning to use those sorts of technologies better, but there also needs to be better international conversations and preparedness so that when this sort of thing starts to happen on one side of the world, we know that because there are about one and a half million people airborne around the planet aboard aircraft yeah, right yeah. now with no city more than 24 hours from any other, these things move fast and we don't have time to sit on our hands and watch the numbers climb before we do something about it. We've got to be more decisive in our responses next time. Virologist Dr Chris Smith, really appreciate your valuable insight. Thanks for talking to us on the live desk here at GB News.